Hey guys, uh, thank you and welcome to another episode of the weekly season five, episode seven, and the gang is almost all here. Starting off with the one and only Optimus Prime, aka Mr. Juan Carlos Bagnell. Uh, thank you for joining us. How's it going, man? Uh, Autobots roll out. Yeah. <laughs> no, sorry, sorry, ladies and gents. Uh, I'm I'm tearing up something and I don't know what I broke, but I can't get my uh, my super cool fancy camera webcam feed to work. So you're gonna have to deal with the awesome visage of Optimus for my commentary this week. All right. So well, thank you. Next up is Mr. Warren Bowman from bw1.com how's it going man i'm here all right that was uh, a little bit uh drawback and finally the man in darkness the one and only black iron underscore man because we can't see him for whatever reason but yeah webcam you know. issues <laughs> <laughs> webcam issues people Yes, yeah, so if you listen to, uh, to the podcast since we do the show live on uh google hangouts through youtube um two uh of of course our regular oh well so sam has his camera back and uh and uh, optimus prime is chatting with us uh via mr horn back though i'll keep futzing with it if i can get it working i'll i'll try and pop it on but so far this is this is as good as i can get right now oh oh but you throw back old school man <laughs> right I'm, I'm <laughs> so i know stuff is working i just I just can't figure out what the feed is, and I'm worried it might actually be a problem with my camera, the HDMI out from my camera. Camera, I see. Um, all right, cool. Let's let's kick it off. Um, I, first of all, I don't have a uselessness unless it's something, but I wanted to kick it off with Alexa losing her damn mind this week. I thought that was going to be the uselessness. <laughs> okay. I mean, it, it is, but I just wanted to kick it off with that. Uh, well, so, are you sure you want to call Alexa useless right now? Because she's uh, going to laugh at you. She yeah, right. you know, considering she's in my house, so I don't know. <laughs> but what are your thoughts on this? Uh, just the th you know, uh, Amazon put out a statement and said that they know what the problem is and they're trying to fix it, and that's literally it. Um, but what do you guys think about Alexa and the fact that you, know, you ask a question and she just pulled off her laugh routine, uh, pretty much? So, any thoughts, uh, Juan? Well, it, it's uh, it's interesting watching these companies iterate and work on software, and then when these updates have can have unintended consequences. I'm sure there was probably a team at Amazon saying, "Hey, we can make Alexa more personable and more fun," and then it triggered something in the responses from queries that they weren't expecting, and this is where we get to the super creepy state that our gadgets are now mocking and laughing at us that and it is probably the harbinger of the upcoming robot apocalypse so i for one welcome our new robot overlords as you can tell by my picture of optimus prime damn it juan <laughs> <laughs> uh how about you warren uh, it's uh kind of interesting that uh, what happened with alexa there and i don't like google's response of like i mean not google i'm sorry amazon's response of like huh? you know that's <laughs> really what they responded i don't know but we'll fix it i'd like to know what went wrong because that could be a catalyst for maybe something even you know bigger happening than her just kind of losing her mind and whatnot so uh, i'm glad they're going to fix it but i just wish it would be there would be more to it maybe maybe it was supposed to be some like preparing for some April Fool's joke or something like that, and they just, you know, released it a little early. Maybe that's what they did with it. I don't know. Uh, Sam, what do you think about Alexa just, you know, going a little batshit crazy? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they, they, they finally figured out why it was laughing. I can't remember what the reason was again, um, but that is creepy, man. Just imagine sleeping and then waking up to Alexa just, like, chuckling. That would be Weird, man. I, I, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's something that's funny and jokey that people are going to joke about, but it does lead to some uh, very serious questions. One, what happens when these um, when these devices that you have in your home start acting in ways that you you know you really don't agree with or don't like? I go and find John Connor. Point? That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I think it does. It, it is a serious question, and I think um, Amazon, Google, 
uh, Microsoft and all the other providers of these uh, assistance um, um, speakers or smart speakers that they need to come up with a with a true answer for how to mitigate these issues before it actually gets down to the end user. Hmm. I mean, very good point. Um, anything else anyone wants to add? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm with Juan here with uh, the whole fact that yes, you know, the uh, AI apocalypse, the robot apocalypse is all coming to a head. So, I mean. I mean, it, it seems pretty clear to me who's going to win this fight. So uh, I just like being on the winning team. Uh, I mean, it's I, I've said it all along. And I, you know, I will build my spaceship and leave the galaxy. <laughs> Y'all can have planet Earth. With what metal? With what metal? That's the Euron Dragoy. Drake Greyjoy stuff. With what, <laughs> what materials? There's what enough rocket? materials. I don't care. It what rocket those. do you and have access metal. to? And metal. And exactly. And metal. You know, there's vibranium now. <laughs> We're gonna go to Wakanda, grab some vibranium. Oh Jesus. Is that me? Am I the one who's giving the okay. Yeah, you got you got a little a little staticky on us. Uh oh, that's weird. Okay. Um but yeah, um, I think uh, hopefully they can fix that uh, pretty much. That's what I'll say. All right, let's move on. Why am I still? Hold on a second. Is that better? Yeah. Aha. Okay, there we go. Nope, it's still misbehaving somehow. All right. Oh, it, almost sounds like, it almost sounds like a cable's getting tugged or something like that. Yeah, I'm like, like I'm like pushing and something. flapping the cables. There's nothing. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't know that. <laughs> oh, there it is, maybe. Maybe okay. The whole way. Uh, maybe it's not. Yeah. So... <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm just gonna switch to to the other mic. Give me a sec. Let's do this. So, so what headset is that? E that is not working as well as you'd hoped. Oh, can't hear you. You're out. No audio at all. I muted the mic. I can't tell you the name of the headset. Um, but, <laughs> but I will say that I have used it. I was using it, and I, I'm thinking this is Google misbehaving at this point. Okay. Uh, hello. I you like the answer. I have used it. I was using it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear. I, I'm still getting the static. Though. Can you guys hear that? I, can't, I wasn't getting the static. I stopped getting the static after a bit. Okay. Well, I'm not right. hearing static, but I do hear that click pop. Yeah, the click, yeah, I don't know where it's coming from. Anyway, um, uh, moving on to our next topic, Qualcomm, Broadcom, Intel. That thing is turning into a hot mess now um, with just different things happening. Uh, Qualcomm uh, basically elected a CEO uh, who would take an interim position to look at whether this deal is, is feasible for them. Uh, but during the vote, it looks like Broadcom, I mean, it's a hostile takeover. Broadcom execs who were put up for the vote had higher votes uh, than the current Qualcomm execs. Um, and then uh, and then there's word that Intel now wants to buy Broadcom because they are afraid of Qualcomm and NXP merger. Yeah. I'm like, Intel is basically scared of the competition. I, I think at the end of the day, it's Intel really can't buy Broadcom. It will be seen as being a mon monopolistic move. Uh, Broadcom buying Qualcomm makes more sense, but it's, it's not going to be easy for them. I think uh, the changing of the CEO is a very clear indicator that maybe he was, what's his name, Jacobs? He might have been the barrier to... Um, yeah, he was, he was, to he's the son of the founder of Qualcomm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So they're thinking, okay, they want to get someone more independent in there. Well, into that same token, the Broadcom Qualcomm acquisition oh. is looking like it's going to face a lot of scrutiny mm -hmm. from, it is. Uh, from regulatory agencies, too. I mean, Intel buying Broadcom would be viewed as more monopolistic, but I don't think Broadcom Qualcomm is that far off from being yeah. viewed as fairly monopolistic. Be because also, again, uh, the some of the reasons that fall into that uh, regulatory process and why, like, you know, I think something in Congress was stated this week is because uh, Broadcom is not, it's not the same Broadcom as you know. There's a parent company who owns it, switch names, and some of their practices have been, I mean, yes, all these companies have funny practices, but it's just been a little bit off. So um, it, it, it called a lot of things into question, but this is turning out to be 
uh, a very sloppy. <laughs> Not nice. It's a, it's a three-way fight, right? Uh, and then, and then, mind you, Qualcomm also has increased the attendance for NXP as well. Mm -hmm. um, so NXP valuation has gone up, and you're like, this is this is like four companies, and everybody's like trying to hook up with each other. It's just messy. Yeah. It's really, it's, it's really like a corporate orgy. Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much. More like corporate cannibalism, but yeah, sure. <laughs> So, so it's a corporate cannibal orgy. Is that That's is totally a movie that needs to be made, grind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sam, you're about to say something. No, no, no I, I just think it's really funny that um, Qualcomm is making a purchase of an XP. Broadcom wants to make a purchase of Qualcomm. So basically, if Broadcom gets it to be Broadcom, Qualcomm, and XP together, and but. But Intel can't buy Qualcomm directly because that's anti-competitive. Doesn't need NXP, <laughs> <laughs> so, and um, and Broadcom. I don't think Broadcom needs NXP either. So I think in the first, at the end of the day, NXP might be the one that loses out. <laughs> so yeah, if I'm yeah. NXP, I'll be like, uh, buy us quickly, buy us quickly, Qualcomm. Let's get this out of the way. Well, I mean, and, and that's the thing, though, because uh, from Broadcom's history, it looks like, I mean, they're looking for companies that can, that are cash cows, and Qualcomm is a good cash cow for them. Intel's looking for a company to basically save its chipset division as things move forward, because we know that at the end of the day, a, at some form of, form of fashion, not just ARM, but basically mobile style chipsets will rule the Windows landscape because users are not going to go for high performance unless it's a desktop or a certain kind of functionality. And also with cloud computing in you know doing stuff off the, off the cloud, that's going to back up a lot of areas. So um, Intel needs to do do something there in that respect, and NXP just needs to. I guess in the, for them, they need somebody else that can either jump with to move forward as a company because they are they are not big enough to make too much waves in this. And mind you, uh, in terms of all these semiconductor companies, um, Samsung is still the largest out of all of them, which is kind of the weird part of the whole thing. Which is even though it's not part of this whole discussion, but just in terms of semiconductor companies. Samsung. Yeah, is actually they, they could be the largest manufacturer, but when it comes to name recognition, oh, yeah. these the, the, these three have to be the larger name recognition. Even though Broadcom is no longer the Broadcom we no one recognize, um, Broadcom still has name recognition. And Same one, one, one more thing, uh, I didn't put in the notes, but uh, an unknown company is looking to buy AMD. So this just threw that one. <laughs> 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 I forgot. I forgot. Okay, why you're right. This is this is straight up. A how hilarious would it be if it was looking to buy AMD? Who? It, how hilarious would it be if it was NXP? You know, like NXP is going to make a. <laughs> this is like a. Oh, then then we change the name to a circle jerk. That's what we change the name. To. Uh, <laughs> sorry there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, let's just call it what it is. It's a hot mess right now. It's a hot mess uh, on that in that regards. Moving on to some other news. Um, uh, reports are coming in that the Galaxy Note 9 most likely will not have a fingerprint sensor underneath the screen. KGI is reporting that uh, because Samsung believes that a fingerprint sensor is still better than facial recognition and it's also more reliable for consumers. So they want to get it right the first time off the bat and not have anything that will slow down the, the, the process. We've seen fingerprint sensors underneath the screen from Vivo devices. They have the Vivo X20 Plus UD. Uh, it's on one specific spot. The concept phone, the Apex, has a certain area um, that you can use. But what do you guys think about this? You think Samsung is playing it right? Do you think they should just put it in there? Or do you think you know it's just, hey, wait till it's done properly? Uh. That's a tough one because I, I personally am the kind of person who's always been um, excited to see what Samsung adds to the Note line. Because the Note line to me has always been like that, you know, that experimental slash future future thinking device from Samsung. But if this isn't implemented correctly, if this has actual issues or actual uh, uh, quality uh, issues or usability issues, then yeah, I can see why they're not going to include it. Um, having a fingerprint scanner on the back 
will probably makes probably makes more sense at the end of the day. I war. Yeah, I agree. And the same. If when it's ready, is ready. If it's not ready right now, then don't implement it right now. There's no rush for it. Yeah, and and there's something that that kind of clicked as soon as I saw what was the concept phone at MWC? Uh, the Apex. The Apex. Okay. So something clicked in my brain when we started talking about fingerprint sensors under the screen. We've always had a tactile location that our fingers could find for a fingerprint sensor. On Samsung phones, it was a clicky uh, a home button. Mm -hmm. On a lot of other phones, it's an indent that your finger can find on the back of the device. If you have to hit a small localized target under your, under your display... I think that will drastically reduce the success rate of you scanning your fingerprint for that first scan. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, well, I totally got used to it after like three weeks of using it. You know, like <laughs> that's that. I'm so tired of phone manufacturers making us get used to new things that weren't broken before. So I, I think Samsung might be in a better, better position looking at that Vivo to say, you know, hey, we're going to we're going to try and improve this technology so that the entire bottom third of the Note display or the Galaxy S10 display is a, is a fingerprint scanning space. So you don't have to worry about where your finger lands mm -hmm. as long as it hits somewhere in this bottom stripe, then your phone should be able to be unlocked. Yeah, I think I think that makes a lot of sense. And uh, you're definitely right, true, because uh, if it's the bottom area, then you're good. You know, like I don't have to think too much. I just know it's usually where the home button used to be or around there or somewhere close or three inches to the left or whatever. the case. Well, and think that's actually an improvement, right? Yeah. So, so how many of these tech changes recently have not been improvements? They've just been changes. You know, if you don't have to hit just a tiny sensor on the back or reach your thumb all the way down to a tiny button on the front, that actually improves the biometric security experience, the tactile experience over what we had before. That to me is is something worth waiting for as opposed to getting a, a, a hamstrung implementation or a poorer implementation. But it's change for change sake. That to me doesn't doesn't move phones. But a Galaxy S10 or a Galaxy Note 10 that has a better fingerprint scanning solution than what we've had before would be something to get excited about. Cool. All right, uh, moving on to some sad news. I know we talked about Moto a little bit last week and you know, word has come in that uh, Lenovo is uh, laid off a few people at the Moto facilities in um, uh, Chicago and uh, some rumors where I think the Moto Z line might die off because that's where that line is made. Uh, at least that's the team that handles it. Uh, but Lenovo released a statement that says, in late 2017, Lenovo announced a world resource action that would occur over the next several quarters and impact less than 2% of its global workforce. This week's uh, employment reductions are a continuation of that process. We are reducing our motorola operations in Chicago. However, this does not impact half of our workforce there and our Moto Z family will continue. So what do you think this says about Motorola and Lenovo as a whole and what they're doing with that brand, as well as um, if they're going to make any changes to what they do this year in 20, 2018? Well, does anyone else feel that this is yet another company that could benefit from all the times we've complained about focusing their product lines? Like how many different variations of the Moto G5 do we really need? Uh, yes, they, I guess I said it last time, they released three sets of phones in three months span and there were three variations of those three sets. And you're right, they just need big and small, that's it. Well, I, I, I think you could do well with four lines of phones, you know, a Moto E, a Moto G, a Moto X, and a Moto Z. I think you could do really well if you only had one phone per well, liner. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and I do agree, though. I think the Moto E is a great, really cheap phone. I mean, it's what, 90 bucks or something like that? Well, um, and, and packing such a huge battery into such a low power well, device. Exactly. I think there's totally a market for that. And same thing with the Moto G. I have so many family and friends who have switched out of uh, premium, really expensive flagship phones because of devices like the Moto G4. Yeah, I really think that Motorola at this point 
um, to me, I think not four, I think three lines, uh, EG and the Z should just compete against the OnePlus. I, I just no, give, go I away disagree. From, go away I, from I the think, premium. I, I think, I think the, the X could be their premium mid-ranger line, which also ties into a relationship with Google for, uh, for Project Fi, uh, unlocked phone that it's an Android one focused device. And then I think every company should have a high end flagship sports car product. And I think the Z needs a lot of work to reach that. I, I think the modular phone discussion is proving to be too broad and too confusing for consumers, but I I'd really love to see, you know, a division, a proper division between a Moto X, a Moto Z and maintaining those lines. But I also don't want four or five individual different regional SKUs for each letter. And I think four phones could do very well for this company. Mm. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I think, I mean, you're right. The Z needs a lot of work, which is why I would put the Z down at the OnePlus level. And I think at that level, it's even, I think it's easier to push an accessory at that level, uh, attachment speaker, uh, you know, projector, whatever it is. I think at that level, it just makes more sense than me paying 800, then paying for an attachment speaker again, it becomes a thousand dollar phone. No, but that, that's that's what I mean is like if we're going to return, this is what we talked about on the, the Pocket Now Weekly. So apologies if anyone's heard me sort of prattle on about this before I'm kind of repeating myself here. But um, if you have the Moto X as your one plus competition, then it's more about practicality and putting in, you know, sort of a high end chipset. But you're making other compromises in other places to reach a lower price point. I think there's a psychology for a brand like Moto that they need to have something that is premium. So if consumers see a OnePlus price tag, the first thing they're going to think is, oh, well, it's $300 less good than a Galaxy. <laughs> oh, it's $200 less good than an iPhone. I'll just buy the iPhone or the Galaxy. They need something at that top. But I don't think the answer is modular accessories. I think instead, Moto should return to Moto Maker and make their conversation uh, you know what, yeah. where essential dropped the ball where else can you go to get a phone you know you're a businessman you're busy you're on the go you want a durable device think of the lineage of motorola corporate business grade devices and where else can you go to get your phone clad in horween leather where else can you go to get your phone clad with titanium trim and executive styling embossed logos on the back i mean there, there. If we're going to make this an emotional plea, I think you can totally tap into the nostalgic market for people who used to rock Moto as the durable business grade device, and then differentiate yourself by making true premium. I mean, make jokes about, oh, that phone's made out of glass. <laughs> you know, like you can totally unseat the market in two generations. I feel if you make that a play for real premium materials for the build quality of your device. Or just bring back the razor. <laughs> uh, you know what? It's a, it, but yeah. that's just it. Is like bring back the razor and say, you know, like we we can make the back the the sides of your phone out of aluminum, steel, or titanium. We can make the back of your phone out of uh, glass if you want glass, ceramic. We can do uh, Kevlar. Do you want a Moto Razor with Kevlar on the back or leather on the back? I mean, Motor Maker Moto Maker was so awesome. You, do you want a phone made out of teak wood? Let's do it. You know, it, it'll it'll be ridiculously expensive, and you'll have the only one. But this is something we're extending to people who truly want that premium bespoke gadget that's custom fit, tailored to exactly your use in your lifestyle. Um, Warren, Sam, what do you guys think? Uh, I don't know. I think the, the layoffs are a natural kind of uh, occurrence when you've merged two companies together, when you bought a company, if, eventually you need to remove all the redundancies. But, um, you know, I feel bad for the guys in Chicago who are going to be losing jobs, but I think they saw this coming. Just, uh, you know, looking at some of the, you know, uh, I would say non-official corporate gossip sites when you start talking about Lenovo layoffs and people who claim to be Lenovo employees. They've known about this since like late last year and people in January are saying that, hey, this is coming, you know, you know, this is coming down the pipelines in another month or so, late February, they would say. And I guess they knew to expect it. I just hope enough of them found something else before they had to leave. Hey, Nokia's back. Maybe they're looking for some people. 
you know? <laughs> Let's get some. Not even just Nokia. Yeah. Think about all the other newer brands out there who wants to get actually engineering knowledge, marketing knowledge, um, who could just pick up someone with all this in, um, industry knowledge and just you know they can hit the ground running. So I'm thinking essential. I'm thinking even uh, OnePlus. Any company out there who's really looking for someone with experience in the industry, Motorola's had a lot of experience. Yeah, and, and, and those engineers, you're you're absolutely right there. I could totally see a good fit for like. A, like an Honor Huawei or a, a OnePlus Oppo. Acquiring some of that talent could be a coup for a lot of these other brands. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That is very true. Um, all right, cool. Um, let's move on to the next topic. We might spend some time here. We might not. But Windows 10S is dead. <laughs> Push me to the head. Windows dead is after dead. Windows Metro or did it die after Windows RT or... Did it die after they tried to make S its own thing, and now they're trying to make S its own feature? So I, I don't, I don't get this. Microsoft doesn't learn, man. They just uh, don't. here comes the rant. Yeah, we, no, no, rant. We, before we get into that, just just read it in a blog post from Microsoft Corporate Vice President of Windows, John uh, Joe. I can't. I keep. Can somebody please pronounce his last name for me? Uh, Belfore, right? Yes, you are. Belfiore, yeah, Belfiore. 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 said that there was some confusion around Windows 10 S from both consumers and partners. More like partners didn't like it and consumers didn't like it. So Microsoft will now give users the option to have Windows 10 S mode on any version of Windows instead of being its own division. This means a consumer can choose to purchase Windows 10 Home uh, or Windows 10 Pro PC and then choose to enable 10, uh, S mode an enterprise when uh, whenever possible play, uh, as deployed by enterprises. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. You will spend the money to buy Pro and then you would then turn on a feature that cuts off <laughs> every uh, single feature that you bought the operating system for because it is let me let me put it how let me put it uh, and this is how they boo. I know but this is how Microsoft messed up the all the messaging for this right no I know yeah. how they messed up all their messaging for this they decided to, they decided the green light this project is how they messed this up yeah, I know I, I know I know how they did but I'm saying that the you know the initial thought of 10s was to combat was to basically move more uh Windows devices into schools right that's literally what it was for Who I was use old software yeah. legacy shit. yeah you know that was that's what they were trying to do at their press conference I was there they talked about it and yeah, they literally should have the, the Windows RT approach as well yeah I, I know or and it's failed why do they keep on trying but what they should have done then I think was to just say that any Windows PC is now capable especially for schools where you can limit certain things, you can make sure your kids are doing whatever you want to do, and you call it a day. It may never pick up, I but at least at least you will not have this it messaging. Would it, would it would never be used. It would never be used. There's a million There's a company companies that does, that does this already. stuff. Apple. Apple does this, and people go to PCs versus Mac uh, computers because the PC is more open. Do not shoot yourself in the freaking foot. <laughs> this is why people buy your products. Don't kill your product and remove trash. the reason for people can we buying call, it. Can we call this a straight trash homie segment? That's what this is. <laughs> trash. And he, the, the moment they said Windows 10S, it was the dumbest thing on earth. Yeah. The best part, the best part is buying a $2,500 Surface PC and default installed is Windows 10S. That was That's the worst part, part, man. That was. I the, was like, you have got to be. I, I, I thought they were going to show off like a $300, like a $400 or $500 Surface and say, you know, this is it with Windows 10S. But when they showed the Surface laptop and it starts at like, you know, 1200 I was like, you people are joking, right? And then just to make it, I just wanted to read the rest of the article because, the, I mean, the writer also says, if you are confused, you are not alone. As far as I'm concerned, Microsoft did not solve any confusion, but rather created more. Yeah. Windows 10S was a failure, but instead of admitting in a straightforward way, Microsoft made it optional on other editions of Windows. They're just, they're if, just <laughs> doing that because as, they don't want the store to die. As if anyone in their right mind would choose a cripple to cripple their computer. <laughs> yeah. Are any of you getting the sneaking suspicion that Microsoft is trying, like, in the worst possible way to make another end run into mobile? Oh yeah, they are. It's, 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 they're doing it again. Yeah, I mean, Windows 10 on ARM. So now Windows 10 will run on on ARM processors like the Qualcomm 835, 845. 
a version of Windows that focuses on the store. And all we need is a UI update for ultra small screens because they've already been working on always connected PCs. So your portable device, which runs a crippled version of Windows 10, which is on an, an, a Qualcomm 845 and has only the Windows App Store to, to draw from, has an LTE connection. Why don't you just use it as your phone? Because you don't want to use it as your phone? <laughs> right, exactly. Be because the right in answer. the next year or so, you're going to stop supporting it, and then I'm going to be shit out of luck for this device that I own. Because <laughs> introduced windows phone like how many times already Go ahead, Sam. how many times already there's <laughs> no trust whatsoever when it comes to microsoft and mobile and hardware anymore they've lost my trust see like, it wasn't me this week ranting on microsoft <laughs> <laughs> i'm I sorry but, it. it's, but 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 it's sam's it's going full super through you. Sam, sam's going is, full super saiyan rant on this <laughs> I'm just, i just think it is, it is totally incomprehensible that they've tried this before remember when windows 8 came out the whole metro mode that people poo pooed and they came out with like Windows Classic mode on there. They tried this already before. And then they came out with Windows RT and no one wanted that bullshit. And they, they basically killed that off. And then they come in again with Windows F and dude, it's the freaking third time. Just stop doing it. Did really, you say Windows S or Windows F? It. It's pretty much uh, the same. Windows thing. F and S are the same. <laughs> Fail. Failed. <laughs> Windows F. You get an F. For keep... I, like to me, I'm going to be honest with you. Let's let's be. Let's, I'm going to be straightforward. As far as the consumer side goes, if it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. If it's Windows 10 and you are you your your main feature is providing a fully rich, fully supported operating system that's flexible on many different pieces of hardware that allows people to use the apps they want to use anywhere they want to go, then just continue to do that. I, I don't see why they need to reinvent the wheel on anything. They came out with a great idea, a great idea with the Surface. That is the most inventive thing they put out since the um, since the Xbox, which isn't really that's just following in the gaming space. But the but but to me, I don't see why they need to do anything else. Mobile, they had their shot. I think I remember. I think well, I think I remember what was the fourth or fifth time he. That we went to some Windows phone event, and, I said, and what, what did I say every single time? I was like, "They're doing it again, We're introducing this shit again." And he would have big faith. He's like, "No, man, this is gonna come through, man." And just, just as I pull out my Android, and just like, just, just like, no, man, it's done. It's been dead. They continue to beat this horse so badly. They need to stay away from mobile. They're, they're, in a sense of trying to make an operating system or a device that's dedicated to their hardware, they just it, that's not going to work. If you have better chances of selling those Microsoft edition Samsung Galaxy S devices with <laughs> with your pre-installed apps on it, yeah, then then you yeah. do of selling your own stuff. I, it's I, time I, to give that up. The worst part is is that there is always potential. It's just that when we have. What okay. four generations oh, of Microsoft wait. screwing what? us in what? trying to invest in that ecosystem? We didn't, know, even, I, we didn't even talk about Continuum. We didn't even talk nah, about the nah, one nah, nah, idea nah, 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 that actually should have worked for them. And don't worry, um, Samsung and Google and all the rest of them are going to do it better. Let's run away from and, that. Let's move away from and, Continuum. And, yeah. And, and, and then so, <laughs> no, don't don't worry. Problem. They will reintroduce it again. Just because the other others have done it better than that. To me, to me, I think I think their best play right now is literally because uh, is literally focusing on Windows and ARM, like Windows ARM PCs. Like it, it's going to be cheaper, better battery life, lighter, and a lot of people don't do as much work as say we do on our laptops or computers. That's what people want. To me, they need to focus on things that are going to work for businesses and industries and stuff Jeez. like that. So, 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 if it's like point at point of checkout system, POS systems, if it's oh, they've uh, already lost the POS battle. Oh, yeah, that's, that's all systems. Androids and um, iOS right now. Yeah, but they they but they can still swing they can still swing in cheaper with some type of device that can undercut that and support the same things. They they can still swing lower than what an iPad well, and, and, and also, you know, so they can compete in that space in all these markets Microsoft needs to understand it's okay to be third place so long as those mm -hmm. divisions are generating revenue and are showing growth 
Windows Phone was demonstrating growth before they completely disappeared <laughs> from the market for three years before coming out with one of the worst I mean, designs. That's on that climb up the top rope like Macho Man pointed to the sky and elbow dropped the shit out of Windows Phone. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, so to Warren, Warren's all your, existence. Warren, to your point, being a distant third place in POS systems is still. A humongous money-making opportunity. They were already there. They were already at distant third in that whole space. So why not continue to do that? Half these stupid ATM machines still run Windows XP, XP. embedded. <laughs> <laughs> that shocks the heck. Oh, and, and, and don't forget, don't forget a lot of the um, new digital, this recently digital uh, billboards, they all run XP as well. <laughs> so, what happened to the original Surface idea? Why don't you just do that for all the other things and make yeah. digital displays and think if you can point and click and go like this so somebody that's a sportscaster or somebody on the news doesn't look stupid when they try to stretch out or touch a screen. Like, well, do that stuff. I mean, there, there are a lot of avenues that they could they could play on. And again, it goes back to the point that... You be worried about keeping a damn NFL contract. Um, <laughs> you be worried about... You know, my, Microsoft is focusing on... I mean, their focus on cloud has... It has been a detriment to almost every other aspect, other than Windows, core Windows, where they always have to make, you know, they always have to improve because that's Windows a, 10 is self, it, it's it, self sustaining. It's, Windows it's, it's, as an operating system runs itself. No, but it's, it's that, also, that's not a business they have I mean, to focus on. but it's a, it's a breadwinner where you still have to just keep engineers, you focus, yeah. you, you do software. But that's, you know, fixes but that's, stuff like that. But that thing, that thing is. But, really self-sufficient in its own thing. But the but fact that they have all these different avenues that we, we mentioned, we're going, okay, this is running old legacy software here for billboards, for this, for that, uh, POS systems. And and then, you you know, one of the things with the with the whole uh, ARM Windows that kind of pissed me off was, I remember when you saw it last year, uh, Sam, um, when they were just demoing, it was running Windows. It wasn't running Windows 10S or anything. Yep. There was no limitations. We were just running Windows. Running Windows. Exactly. And the next minute, you were like, it's launching with Windows 10. I'm like, well, this thing was running Windows fine. <laughs> like, it, it, it's ridiculous. And, and, and the, thing, the thing that really gets me about Microsoft, and it's, it's not like I – let me put it this way. I don't like um, talking ill of Microsoft. The reason I talk ill of Microsoft is because I actually believe Microsoft has a lot – of great ideas. Sam, 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 I think we're all on the same page on that. Yeah, line. but no, but, but even, even <laughs> while we're talking about this, while we're talking about this Windows S silly debacle, right? This is the news right now. They should have been pushing the whole idea that they launched a Surface Pro with a freaking like SIM card in it. Who's talking about that? Oh, because oh, no, 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 no. Because Microsoft wants to talk about Windows S. Like, what's because wrong with you? You, you want to know? You want to know why they don't talk about that? Because it takes them six months after they announced the damn device to ever put it out. That's why they don't talk about but the LG. It's still a win. It's still something that people want. <laughs> And they talking all, about something that no and one they all have already learned how to hit hotspot on their phone and connect with their laptop. It's a dead idea yeah. at this point. It's a dead idea. It was a great idea. No, to your point, Sam, it's a great idea. But how long those took? Going back to like the Surface 3, I think, is when they first started doing that. How yeah. long those took to come out? And, and, the, and the complications of getting them set up was ridiculous. I don't necessarily put that up on them too much. That might be a lot have to do with carryable. Bull, oh, bull, it's totally bull, down it, the area. It, it's carry, it's of... carry bullshit. The only time it, it just changed with this whole Qualcomm thing is because now you can, I think two carriers allow you to mirror your SIM in there, which makes a lot of sense. So you, you would think the carriers that yeah. you think the carriers that want to charge you 10 bucks a device or 25 bucks a device to add to their plan would make that a lot faster and easier. That. They should be like, you get LTE, you get LTE. They should be putting their radios in every device that pops out of whatever manufacturer that has an operating system at the mobile device. Hey, you want LTE on that? Instead, now nah, instead they'll they'll do that for smartwatches. They'll, they'll focus themselves on all these damn smartwatches, but they won't focus on the things that people actually want to use. No, they want to give you Windows S. That's why. Because they want to give you Windows, Windows S. S would have been better. Would have been would have been better done as a damn smartwatch or or, or Microsoft. Fan. Oh God, nope, 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 nope. Don't, 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 don't mention the band. Don't mention the band. Don't get into that one. I still <laughs> I, I I still actually use mine. I still do actually use mine. I still have mine. I haven't thrown it away. But because it, it they, pisses me off every time I look at it. Because they don't have an alternative. In terms, there's not a company that's done an alternative yet in terms of adding workouts to a band in the way that they do it. Yeah. They're the only ones that do it in that way. And it's such and it's such a good feature that I'm like Fitbit, please clone this. Somebody, I don't give a damn. If it's some, I'll pay for the Kickstarter, okay? I don't care <laughs> as long as you clone it and get, allow me to buy something different. 
I, I don't uh, care. Like just, but the, but but listen, but listen to what we're saying here constantly, over and over again, for the last I don't know what is it five years. We've talked about how many times Microsoft has held at something, it, it, and it's been going on kind of before the Nadella era, and it's been going on now all the way through it. We talked about the fail, failures with Windows Phone, the failures of Windows Phone 10, the failures with now Windows S, the failures with their um, Continuum, the failures with the band, where th that doesn't even make any sense because that was widely successful both times. And they just chose themselves to stop, to partner with another company that doesn't give a damn about anything uh, anything other than selling the hardware. They don't care about you that, integrating that their was, software. That was, I that think, was, I think that, that I think of all the decisions Microsoft has made, that truly to me was one of the dumbest decisions. Because it had, a, it had a, a solid fan base of people wanting that. You were in a business like that. segment that you were growing. I mean, I think if you look at it, the band from the perspective of they had a faster switch on the band, like um, attraction on the band than the people did on the surface. So it, it took up to surface three, technically surface four, where people really got on with the surface. With the band, by two, even the people who hated it, you can check out the Verge review. All they were, all the Verge I remember talked about was like, okay, please just change your design. And that's it. Mine broke what three times, and I got yeah. replaced how many times? Three times. That's how much I like that. The first yeah. time. <laughs> so <laughs> they, but they were on the verge of something that could have really put them in a different segment, and then that could have been something that you throw in LTE, you could throw in your Cortana, then you have that base in there, but. Just imagine talking to your band and controlling your Xbox now that it doesn't come with the freaking, um, what's it called, the, the camera stuff on there. Um, the connect. Okay. Connect. Uh, uh, Juan, do you want to round us up, please? Because I think we, <laughs> we will continue. Because even I'm just holding my head now. I'm like, I, a lot of the ideas are coming to my head. I'm like, oh, Jesus, help me. Like, Microsoft, and, why? And we haven't even gotten started on, like, uh, you know, like HoloLens. And oh, how come they're, on! They're, they're giving <laughs> up like their, their AR. All kinds of you know, this, this, this is this is exactly what we've been talking about. I think since we started coming together to do this podcast, since you've yeah. at least had oh. me on. Oh. In five years, five years, oh. of, five years of just well, good old. Microsoft. Well, it, it started out as this is really exciting and look at all the potential. I think we're in a market now where it's put up or shut up. Yeah. I'm tired of companies that keep offering me potential and I'm tired of products that are sold on their potential. No more. And, and I think that's also where we've seen companies drop the ball on support. You buy a product because of what it does in the day that you buy it. And that's all we can really count on. That's all we can really hope for. Right now, there are only a few divisions of Microsoft for hardware that actually produce a product, let alone produce a product that we think is, is sort of worthy of consumer consideration. And for all of the surrounding talent, acumen, savvy, and potential at Microsoft, none of that really warrants any kind of recommendation from people like us. I mean, there's so many family and friends that I think might like some solutions at Microsoft, but until I can see that they can iterate, that they can improve, and that they can support, I'm not going to put my neck out for this company anymore. This sums it up. Well said. This just sums it up. And solid image. Let's move on. Battles. All right. Um, Huawei, um, leaks of Huawei's announcement for the P20, P20 Lite, and P20 Pro are out. Oh, already too damn many. The, <laughs> already yep. too damn many. Yep. The, the P20, that just hurt my head. The P20 Pro comes with a triple camera setup and most likely oh, God. going with Huawei's um, uh, Leica. Uh, no, no, not like, but their, their camera setup is one, of course, the third camera probably is a black and white sensor, yeah. and then the other one will... Oh, the OHTC uh, thing, the uh, monochrome the, thing. Yeah, monochrome, and then the other one will allow, the other will allow for, like, a, a portrait mode as well. Uh, and then the P20, the regular P20, doesn't have that at all. Uh, and then the P20 Lite has just two camera sensors with a fingerprint sensor at the back. Fingerprint sensors look like they are on the front of the P20 Pro and P20. You know, I should actually share this image for you guys who are. Just stop. Uh, which one's coming to America? None are coming like, to America. I, I probably guarantee. Uh, it's just like that. That, but that's my thing. It's like which one has the potential of actually being pitched to U.S. care? To, no, to the US? It's, I, I don't. don't like let me put it this way. Huawei is Huawei is done. 
Wife Huawei is done, I think, in the U.S. in that respect. I think for them right now, it's selling Honor phones in the U.S., and that's pretty much it. I think they... Well, I, I believe that there will be a P unlocked. I mean, yeah, yeah, you'll probably see this show up at B&H, but I don't that's think... That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about unlocked. They're not getting a carrier deal. I'm talking about unlocked. Um, well, I, I, don't, I don't think any of them are really working that. I think Honor is probably going to continue trying to push into alternative retail markets like brick and mortar for Target. Like, I'm kind of surprised that the 7X hasn't shown up at Target yet. Uh, the 6X was actually kind of a big coup for them. And maybe we'll see something like the View 10 also do likewise. But I, I, I don't think that the P-Series ever had designs for North America. I think their wedge was trying to get the Mate to be their end of the year carrier deal. And when that fell through, Huawei isn't looking, I think, to seriously try and engage in the United States. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, not well, not for a little while. I, th I think at some point we'll. Do, I think they'll give it another shot again. It just won't be this year, or maybe not even next year. But then who knows? People will be pissed off at somebody else by then, and maybe. Well, Jamie ja said uh, they they are trying to make that move in next year. Uh, they've yeah. said it's. A, we'll see. We'll see. And what they're happens. more. And they're more China. They're more China than Huawei is. Well, yeah, but <laughs> but Xiaomi doesn't have any designs on telecommunications hardware infrastructure, so they won't oh, get the once, same. Advisor. Once we once Verizon and AT and T roll out their five G, I'm pretty sure they won't have a problem in Huawei showing up. Just as long as they get ahead of the market first exactly no, yeah, you know but, but, but xiaomi making a move into north america this year even though they're a chinese company they're not going to have the same kind of law enforcement advisory against their products because xiaomi isn't trying to sell cell towers yeah yeah mean, meanwhile one plus still leaks data to jesus, <laughs> 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 jesus. That, it's just amazing how like that is just can, can can we tell all these Android manufacturers to just stop the notch thing, man? Please, come on. Yeah, this is not cool. So this is an iPhone clone, right? An iPhone yeah. X clone. Yeah, I mean, they this, have this, one. This ZT notch, has yeah, cool. one. The rumored LG phone coming out has a bloody notch on there too. Rumored my ass, it is a uh, well, phone. Well, no. So I was really hoping that that G7 was the dead G7 that we're not going to get. That, that I thought was what we saw. I hope they don't them. come out with a G7. I hope they just tell us a V30 sometime in July, and that's it. V35. Well, I, you know, no, I, I the, the phone is coming out in, in May. I yeah, but, but, I, but I think that's also one of the things that we need to get over is just naming. You know, like the G6 and the V30 are basically the big little, right? It, it doesn't really matter what they're called. They're basically the very similar phone. phones, yeah. and, and just a tiny design iteration between the two would have made them exactly the same, the V30 Mini and the V30 Plus, whatever we want to call them. So if, if we scrap what would have been the G7 with a notch and we get back to a V40 and a V40 Plus, that's that I think is probably the best best case scenario for LG. If... If a phone comes out with a notch, I'm going to be very disappointed in LG. I I would agree. Uh, the best notch is uh, Jamais Mi Mix 2. Yeah, that Mi Mix 2, taking it off to the corner. Yeah, yeah it's, absolutely. It's, it's more sensible. Let me see if I can share that, if you guys can see. Um, it's pretty much right here in the corner. That's it. There's a video, but I uh, videos usually lag. Let's see. Let's see. No, nope, this is all software. This is all software. I don't care about the software. But yeah, I, I think I think most people probably are familiar. With oh, there we go. Yeah, you can see the notch in the top right hand corner. That's it. So, anyway, um, yeah, I well, the P twenty. Um, you guys have any more thoughts on that? Yo, for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's nice if they come out. I think I think uh, Xiaomi and their like near borderless phones and things like that that are beautiful pieces of hardware that I think a lot of people would be attracted to in America until they open it up and start using their UI. That's where the buck is going to stop with the majority of their devices until those Chinese manufacturers understand that they have to design their operating systems differently for the for the Americas to work more like how they use phones here. It isn't going to matter. They're just going to put off something with really pretty hardware, and then as soon as it gets opens up, it gets opened up by the user. They're going to go ah, and no, then you're, you're, the end of it. You're, you're not wrong when it comes to the end user experience as it stands today. What I think is is, you know, we're going to talk about potential. <laughs> um, uh, what I think is interesting is we're not seeing the more exciting 
diversions, the more exciting experiments, the more exciting boundary pushing design concepts from traditional manufacturers. Think about fingerprint sensor under the glass. Think about trying to cut into the screen from a design aesthetic and functionality standpoint. Think about, you know, uh, part-time hardware designs like webcams that pop up out of a phone as opposed to cut into the front face. Um, you know, even, even down into things like, you know, we kind of take for granted like quick charging technology, but ultra super fast battery charging technology. Chinese devices have been pushing those boundaries. Uh, look at uh, separate processor cores for you know real-time on-device machine learning and AI applications. It didn't come from Qualcomm first. It came from High Silicon first. You know, so that's that's one of the trends that I think people should be paying attention to. The end product from a Xiaomi today is going to turn off most Western uh, smartphone users, but those design concepts, aesthetic elements, and problem solving, Apple couldn't figure out how to keep their bezel small and beef up their selfie cam. Xiaomi figured out how to keep their bezel small and not overly disrupt the aesthetics of the display. The most important aspect of using a smartphone is that screen, and they found a killer application for getting that done. That is what I think we're going to be paying attention to more in the future is that iteration design is going to be more aggressively coming out of China than it has been from the companies that we hold up as these tech vanguards. I, I, I really think, you know, the, to, to piggyback on what you're saying, Juan, I really was expecting, and I almost think this year should have been this way. This should have been a boring iteration year and not a year of clones of crap. It really should be the way of starting off. It really should be the year that everyone's just putting out their refinements and, and preparing themselves maybe for the next year or the year after to really start to see some of these different changes in design. Because anything that they're going to design right now isn't something that they can create in a year. It's something that's going to take some time to 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 produce so that when they put it out there that it works properly. Things like pop-out cameras, things like fingerprint sensors under the screen, and what are the other iterations of sort of engineering ideas will come out. And I have a, I feel like th this year it's 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 like we're all gonna put a notch in our phone, we're all gonna make AR emojis, we're all gonna uh, we're all gonna attempt to to do we are gonna make glass phones, we're all gonna just try to clone each other instead of like refining each other or or, or going in a, in, in a direction of yeah we got to I don't want to say take a year off but you're not maybe not innovating much this year because you're preparing for the following year or really putting that heavy amount of innovation out there going forward and it just seems like now it's it's going to be numbers game we got triple cameras jesus christ triple cameras on a smartphone i mean i get it but it's like we're just going for a number of a higher on a camera to make it seem to the consumer that three is better than two. When no, Google I, see, I, I, disagree with, I disagree on that one. Damn it, let me finish. Let me finish the point. So I will mute you, you if you start yelling. Me, you won't let me finish the point. You just ruined it. Like, listen to what I was going to say. Oh, God. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. I literally <laughs> said, I was going to say, it says, like, the iterations of three cameras, it, 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 to consumers, is making it seem like three cameras is better than two when Google proved that one camera and a whole bunch of cloud servers can do better than anyone else. Except they can't do black and white well. Black and white sensor still beats it. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, but it, yeah okay. That's, yeah. that's fine. Mostly and take, and, and, multiple teams take color pictures. So anyways. Yeah. And I'll... And almost any photo app can upload and make a black and white photo in like an instant. Yeah, and, and, and to Warren's point there, I, th I think what we're also going to be finding where last year was a good year for specialist phones. Um, specialist phones don't don't crack that general consumer mind share. I, I, I think there is a discussion as to eventually we'll have to have a reckoning on ever increasing price points with devices that are just sort of general all rounders that do everything genuinely good, but don't seem to excel in any significant way for individual characteristics or features. Hmm. And what 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 value proposition are we, are we putting on those devices when we're kind of just covering the basics really, really well, especially for audiences who seem to be fine with spending seven, eight, nine hundred dollars on a phone, and maybe they load up an app or two and they use it to check their email and tweet and not really 
getting what would be eight or nine hundred dollars of use out of that device. But that's what they wanted, because that was the most emotionally satisfying purchase for them to make, you know, when they would have been perfectly well served by a three, three to five hundred dollar mid ranger. This is this is going to become an ever increasingly lopsided market for us to participate with. And how do enthusiasts play into that when the focus starts to drift from us who want or demand specific quality, specific features and get really cranky when we don't get them? I don't see any manufacturer really wanting to support a diminishing segment of the market in a world where smartphones are commodities. Hmm. True. True. That's... Um, I. I <sighs> It's just interesting because, you know, the market pitches, you know, everyone's got to get the best, biggest and baddest phone and the best phones are all the phones that are at the um, 900 or $1,000 price point. So people think that's what they need to have the best experience. So like, like to like one point said is to send a text, tweet, and maybe look up something. And that's about it, even though we all know that there are devices as cheap as like you know 150 200 like the like the like the blue phones that do just as well with many of these things or pack many features that will satisfy most of these customers it just seems like that it it's like that message is probably hard to get out because of the marketing dollar lopsided that it is is that the, the big boys just have more money to push their message out there to be this all around or 800 bucks that even though the I guess the lower end phones don't really have that type of marketing power to be able to push that out there unless Google really gets behind this Android one program, maybe pushes that a little bit more or do you have Amazon that really pushes that? Yeah. Uh, and and, and to your point there, it's that's also one of the things that's feeding the price on a thousand dollar phone is you've got a billion dollar advertising budget to support that thousand dollar phone and that thousand dollar phone has to pay for a billion dollar advertising <laughs> campaign. All I say so, is, <laughs> if, we're gonna, if you're going to market your phone, just market with the Colonel. He'll get some sales. Yeah. Tens of sales from the Colonel. <laughs> tens no. of thousands. Don't say tens. <laughs> tens of sales. I heard that. I heard that. <laughs> Sorry. I, I realize like, you can't see my face when I, when I say jokes like that. Uh, no, the, it's, um, the Colonel one, phone. One of the things over the last two years that was an eye opener was the Qualcomm 625. Um, we, we have these debates, like, would you get a mid ranger today or last year's flagship? And a lot of people I think would be more inclined to get last year's flagship. I have been so well served by that medium tier Qualcomm experience. The 625 actually brought back some ideas that we all complain about, but then we go and throw our money at phones that continue to make the problem worse for things like battery life. And I, I genuinely enjoy the experience of using a phone like the BlackBerry Key One or the Moto G5 or devices that have that 625 and a reasonably decently sized battery because then I know I've got a two-day phone. That, that means something to me where, and again, we like to get up on our high horse about things. I love people who complain like, oh yeah, but the camera was terrible. And like, no, it's not. The camera's just not as good as a Pixel, Galaxy, Huawei, or iPhone, because that's what you buy a $900 phone for. But the camera is perfectly functional, serviceable, and with a little bit of practice, you can still pull off some great shots with it. Juan, you said something very key. Well, most cameras are still- A little bit still... of practice. Yeah. <laughs> and you can find that by reading uh, t reading Juan's book on smartphone <laughs> I, tried, I couldn't remember the title one. I was trying to put a segue yeah, in there, get an Amazon I, link I, in there. Hey, take that <laughs> photo, smartphone photography for noobs, available on Amazon Kindle. Um, but but this, this is what's really frustrating is you do actually sacrifice a feature that people say they care about when you move up to a more expensive device. A Moto E... For someone who's only doing the very basics on their phone, a little light web browsing, occasional Facebooking, maybe a tweet or two, uploading a photo or looking at photos here and there, the Moto E might be the absolute best tailor fit perfect phone for an individual out there who's looking at buying an $800 phone and might be fine with like a $150 purchase and getting that discussion back into the smartphone market has proved exceedingly difficult 
And it is really disappointing that I think a lot of people are probably missing out on things that they say they care about, but then they're emotionally impressed by advertising campaigns and more expensive flashier devices. Which is something LG should be doing. But yeah. Speaking of LG, uh huh. Thank you. I, just, uh, I created a segue, segue. LG with the built-in L's. Mm, uh, <laughs> uh, Samsung, <laughs> Samsung no longer that, like, considers Becky? LG a competitor. Oh, <laughs> this is this news? Uh, I need to find the article, but um, I think they stopped like five years ago, but. But basically, the in the mobile space, they do not consider him a competitor because if you go by mobile sales numbers samsung is at 26 percent uh apple is at 21 uh huawei is next i can't remember the number next is oppo and the fifth is uh jame and then everybody else combines to make about uh whatever the percentage is left at that point that's uh yeah, yeah. so they no longer consider little brother a competitor And but I don't think any of us are horrific. Yeah, guys. I was going to say any thoughts, but I was I like, mean, I, but I'm, I'm thinking for Samsung Mobile, I, I, I think they stopped there years ago. I mean, this is an official statement. <laughs> they, they must have been. It must have been a slow news day. <laughs> I mean, we like, just come up with some salt. <laughs> I think they. Stop, I think they stopped that probably around the S six. <laughs> they probably stopped thinking that. I mean, maybe the S7, I'll be, be a little sooner than that, maybe. Well, not a little sooner, but a little um, not too far, far back. I think they stopped thinking in, that, in sort of that manner. They might have had a blip a little bit because of the Note 7 sort of issue, okay. but it's, me, not, it's not like LG really capitalized on that. This is from, okay, this is not the exact headline I saw, but this is from Android uh, headlines. It says, Samsung no longer considers LG to be one of its competitors within the mobile sector, according to comments provided by a company spokesman during MWC 2018. The spokesman was initially explaining to Android headlines how Samsung's latest smartphone, the Galaxy S9, S9 Plus, have less pre-installed apps than our competitors. After mentioning LG, the representative clarified the position, stating, we don't see them as our competitor. I meant Apple. So mm. that that was an, an, an executive saying, nah, um, they're just not in the same space as we do. And, no, they're uh, not. I mean, they, they, they compete on the TV side and everything else side, but not, not yeah, in the, the mobile space. market. In the whole yeah. lifestyle but, market. I mean, I, I, and, and I'll say, like, but the, as far as, like, 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 when we're talking about home electronics and, 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 and uh, appliances and things like that and all that whole other space, they're, they're neck and neck in that space. But mobile, it's, 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 in the Android world, it's Samsung and really, yeah, I have the, I have the numbers up here. Samsung 2017, 21 percent. Apple 14. Huawei 10.4. Oppo 7.6. Xiaomi 6.3. And everybody else in their grandma is 39.5. And think about it, LG was like number three or four on that list, and HTC. And think about that: Huawei, Oppo, Xiaomi used to be LG, HTC, and Motorola. Mm -hmm. And all three have vanished off that list. It's it's, uh, it's it's kind of crazy when you think about it. It's um it shows you the competition out there, and it also shows you that you can't just you know you can't you wrestle bring, laws. You learn the laws. You got to bring something competitive. And those those in the key thing, those other three companies, they didn't sit here and make Samsung a direct target. They knew they were competing against. A, 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 a competitor in Samsung, but they knew they had to offer something that was compelling across the board, and they had to answer to not only their fans, but their markets that they were pushing their products into. So you needed to put something out there that one did compete with Samsung, but then at the same time was a product that just wasn't out there to compete with Samsung. It was still their product, and this is what their vision of a smartphone is, uh, you know, versus yeah. like LG and I'm I'm not saying this point in the right way, but versus LG and HTC for a very long time, we're just saying we're just kind of putting out products to directly compete against well, the. Uh, I mean, I, I I agree, and I don't. I, I think they're <laughs> they were always looking for differentiators. Like Boom Sound was something that wasn't ever on Samsung's radar until Samsung acquired AKG. G, yeah. yeah. And so they had the you know, and, display, the bendable displays, and they then also LG tried their modular experiment, and I think modular is too broad for general consumers. I don't yeah. think that's a killer killer hook for most 
smartphone consumers out there. So it's not that they haven't been trying. It's just we well, haven't uh, seen that that concerted focus to really say this is what our company is. This is what we do better. And this is why you want to do business with us. And when I see those world charts and that there's 40 percent of the market that's kind of up for grabs, I feel there's that huge opportunity for a company to come in and do something disruptive. It's just that takes money, effort and time. And it, that those three components are something that no company seems to want to risk right now. No company wants an expensive experiment that's going to take time for the market to understand, to come to and appreciate, and the effort involved in finding what is our differentiator? Why are we different from Samsung or Apple? And why should a consumer want to do business with us? That's well, a tough conversation to have. Well, I think I think more. I'm 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 probably thinking more on the longer history since I've been in the space and doing coverage and i'm thinking about their thinking about maybe the last eight or nine years and seeing that they may they kind of went away from that whole when they were when they they were kind of kind of focused on what was making them different and then they went through that period where they completely kind of went away from it and when they kind of went away from it even that year or two when they were just kind of putting out something to compete that's what that's what probably hurt them at that period so when they tried to go back and try to make themselves different again they had no leverage they were just trying to do something different and it just looked like for the sake of being different maybe outside HTC but LG definitely with the modular phone that was a that was a huge huge sort of uh risk that they took that didn't pay it up didn't pay off but they had no solid leverage to build on that to 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 be able to take that type of risk um yeah i just wanted to show you guys this Oppo has a phone with a notch coming out soon <sighs> just, news just popped up I just wanted to share that with you guys. Well, you know what? Which, which means part, we can be pretty confident that the next OnePlus will probably have a notch. That is, that is just pointless. <laughs> well, look at it this way. Most of these notch phones are not really meant to be sold in the U.S. The majority of them are meant to be sold in overseas and in, 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 in Asia and Euro markets that are more or less people looking for clone phones. So... There you go. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, and speaking of uh, OnePlus, thank you very much, Juan, for, you know, helping me uh, look for that. Uh, some leaks for the OnePlus, and the, I can't access that image, but I can see a notch there at the very top. The second I see a 19 by 9 screen, I'm, I'm pretty confident that's going to be a notch phone. Because yeah. it's really an 18 by 9 right. screen with little winglets that come up on the sides and yeah. is crap. <laughs> <clears throat> the only and... the only saving grace in Android is hopefully, hopefully, with uh, future iterations of Android, especially when once we get into Android P, that that space won't ever be used to full screen a video or full screen an app. That it will always be some sort of dedicated digital bezel notification strip, and that it won't overly cut into Why? content or experience. But that's still. It's a terrible way to get to that that kind of experience. I'd rather have that stupid V10 strip that LG put on top of it. <laughs> right? No, no. Expa and expand the functionality up. Don't cut. Fu don't cut into functionality down. Well, give me that Samsung. What was the Samsung Continuum Continue. that we mm -hmm. saw? <laughs> give me that one. Or even first, remember that phone that we that, that we saw E with the cool operating system that was the first time we went to CES. And we caught the guy in the hall El, with it. Else OS. Yeah, yeah. Else OS. I had the little ticker at the top and stuff like that. Perfectly fine. It's doing its own thing. It's actually got some type of purpose. The notch does not. No, it not doesn't. Good. Anyway, uh, yeah, we've come to the end of uh, Notchgate. Uh, Alexa going crazy. Microsoft giving us a lot of time to talk about <laughs> the whole company with just one announcement. Uh, but. Uh, mm. If you have any more comments or questions, guys. Um, we haven't really talked in the comments too much. Uh, leave them in the discussion. I know we really haven't. Uh, Microsoft kind of threw us you know, off the band there. Sam, Sam got heated. Sam. Yeah. It's not my fault. Microsoft makes some <laughs> shitty decisions. <Yeah. laughs> That's usually me. And, and Sam was just like, not today. I, 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 I've been holding it back too long, man. <laughs> They're pissing me off. But uh, uh, but now we've got to the, the part of the show where we talk about what we currently have on our channels and what we can expect um, next week. So I'll start off with you, Mr. Warren Bowman from BW1.com. Uh, what do you currently have on your channel and what can people expect? Uh, currently, everything that I was promising last time and everything I was promising this time. I'm pulling a Sam. <laughs> well, I haven't done that in a while. I just don't say anything anymore. <laughs> 
All right, that is that is good to know. Um, Mr. Juan Bagnell, um, what can people expect to see on your channel currently and uh, also next week? Well, what we um what we have currently up on the channel, uh, we we did some really fun stuff uh, last week with Newegg Now, uh, just talking about uh, PC upgrades and Trisha got to share some really cool uh, pointers on making uh, a good streaming PC. Mm -hmm. Those of you looking to broadcast your gameplay or do uh, podcasting or something like that. Uh, we also did uh, some fun look back uh, work with Altered Carbon, where uh, Anabong, you and Lou joined our podcast to talk about the adaptation of a book into a Netflix series and where we think the future of that might go. I thought that was a really fun discussion that people might want to check out. Coming up next week, uh, we're going to be doing some esports work over at Newegg, uh, some of the professional esports programs that are coming to higher education and then also to uh, sort of corporate esports we're going to be talking about the future of that um one of the things i'm really excited about i'm actually going to go into a screen share here real quick let's hope we can that, see it uh, and unless that gets kind of weird looking here hold on there we go uh i am working with uh, uh juan with I erica we we can't see okay there he is yeah, yeah I'm, I'm working with uh with erica griffin and uh we're, we're doing a, a little launch on a on a challenge this is the old phone challenge uh, and uh, uh we've got a whole team of people that are going to be kicking off to go back and revisit older phones and see like how far we've come if they're still usable can you go home again and uh that that's going to be really exciting and and, and this is also going to be open so erica created a playlist where anyone who wants to join the challenge can be tied in with this playlist. So I'm going to throw it out to you guys here too. Like how far back you can go. Is there an older phone that you'd want to revisit? Is there something that you want to participate with? Um, ba -ba -ba. Is that ba -ba -ba. an Evo? Mm -hmm. With so the standard actually, battery. Someone actually, <laughs> recommended, someone actually requested going back to a classic HTC to do an Evo. Uh, look back at an Evo. So oh, if no, uh, someone in the chat mentioned oh, yeah. Evo for the, the Evo 3D, man. Oh, oh, the Evo Sam, what nice. phone is that? Oh, that's the Galaxy, Galaxy S2. S2. Oh, oh nice. okay. so, so if you guys, if you guys want to join us, um, where our first videos are going to be going up next week, we've got Jason Lewis from Painfully Honest Tech. We've got TK Bay. We've got Jacqueline from MBTYT88. Uh, Erica's doing one on the original Galaxy Note. I'm going back to the HTC Touch Pro, Windows Mobile from back in the day, if you can even still use it today. Yeah. Um, I have so, that phone. It's going to fail. Um, um, <laughs> uh, it, it'll fail in a really interesting way, but it, it'll fail. So um, we've got all of those okay. videos coming up next week. And then I am also working with TK Bay. We're doing a giveaway on uh, a, an Honor View 10, courtesy of Honor UK. So next okay. week, we're going to be doing an nice. international giveaway on that phone. If you guys want a shot at picking up what looks like it could be a OnePlus killer, uh, we'll, we'll have the full details of, of that on Monday. And that's that's the week for Gadget Guy. Cool. Um, yeah, Sam, are you up for it? We can. We, if we do it, we do a combined video. We do. Yeah, uh, no, nah, but the, the thing is, I don't even know if this phone will work. It doesn't. It, the SIM card, whatever. It couldn't, no, it no, but that's, really that's actually what's what's so fascinating is how does it fail? Not not yeah. just that it fails. <laughs> but tell me how it fails, and I think that's that's that makes for a fun video. But right. we've got we've got a whole team of people, and I know a ton of smaller channels are are going to be participating too. So I hope it's a conversation that we can spread. Because there, I think there is something interesting about the idea of what phones were built well enough to really stand the test of time. Like I was thinking about a Note 4, but we still know that the Note 4 is a competitive device today. Like, <laughs> that's, Note 4 is amazing. Th that's yeah. not really yeah, okay. much of a Stop, stop, stop. Like, wait, let me pull my Note 4 out. Yeah, no, I mean, you can fire that up and still do fine. <laughs> It it's, like baller. it's a beast. So I, I went the opposite route. I went how far back could something even be remotely functional? And the one thing that I think is, is hilarious, the, the spoiler that I'll give is uh, the battery life is abysmal, but it doesn't just randomly kick off. So, you know, you've got iPhones that are only two years old that if you don't throttle the CPU, they'll they'll randomly power disconnect because Apple didn't put in a big enough battery. I've got a 10 year old Windows mobile PDA phone that will just run until the last couple percentages of its decayed battery just fine. 
So there are still some lessons that we can learn from older devices and how they hold up today. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely join. Um, we'll see if Sam can get that S two powered on. I have I've powered on my HTC device, um, but it should be fun. It should be a fun. Right video. On. <laughs> Love it. I'll plug it in right now. Join the party. <laughs> it should be a fun video to do. Um, yeah, on our end, um, this whole week was just Galaxy S nine stuff. Uh, we dropped our review on Thursday. Uh, but we also did a lot of mini breakdowns, uh, you know, stuff like hidden features to find in the phone, uh, some camera stuff, uh, looking at Samsung's intelligence uh, scan, which is iris and facial at the same time. And, uh, and also uh, Samsung also announced their new line of TVs this year um, for this year, the uh, the AQLEDs for 2018. So uh, that one's a little different. The Colonel covered that video, not me. So he got to uh, experience television like no one other. Um, so if you're looking for something that you should give you a chuckle, definitely check that out. And then we just dropped our uh, a battle vid. We haven't done a lot of those in a while, but this is uh, on stereo speakers since Samsung now has joined the fray of stereo speakers with the iPhone X, the Galaxy S Plus, and the Pixel 2 XL to see which is the loudest um, uh, and also gives you the best audio options on a smartphone. So that's up there. Uh, next week, we have a surprise device for you. Um, we'll be dropping that on Tuesday. If you like, uh, if you like audio, um, <laughs> it's something in the audio range. Uh, it should be there on Tuesday. And then um, we also will, since we're going to be joining the uh, throwback uh, smartphone fray, uh, most likely I think we'll just drop that video on Thursday next week. Um, so you guys can see, I I've used it for a little bit, so I know the pains. I'm sure Sam will try and use it and we'll see see how that goes. <laughs> I don't even know how to get into my Wi-Fi settings on this thing anymore. <laughs> So we'll, <laughs> awesome. we'll see how that goes. I, I'm sorry. I just found a, a, a Wi-Fi name in my neighborhood called Cat Bodies. <laughs> I'm just yeah, that note. Yeah, some weirdos in my neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. it's time to end the show for so, yeah, Definitely. Um, but yeah, we'll have we'll have some more coverage for you guys uh, coming up next week. I have one that I'm working on. Uh, that I've, I'm not sure if it's going to be up next week or the week after, but I'm working with a professional photographer and we're using the Galaxy S9 Plus to take some photos. And I actually want to just get his own thoughts because he's also very interested at the, you know, the, the, the change in mobile photography as somebody who uses a lot of Canons and, you know, um, Sony, Sony cameras for all his photo shoots. So, That'll be something that we'll, we'll have up in probably next week or the week after. But thank you very much, guys. Thank you for watching. Also, thank you for listening. Uh, if you want to go back and watch or watch this, it's available here on the YouTube channel at Board at Work. If you want to listen, we also have it on our podcast available on both Google and iTunes Store. Um, so you can definitely go ahead and download there and listen. Um, definitely follow all the channels. Check out Mr. Warren Bowman at bw1.com. You can find him there. His channel is spelled B-W-O-N-E-D-O-T-C-O-M. Uh, you can find him on YouTube. You can find him on Twitter. You can find him on Instagram, Facebook with that handle. Uh, he's got some really cool content. You can go, definitely go check out. And of course, you can check out Mr. Juan Carlos Bacnell, aka Optimus Prime today, because we cannot see him. Yeah. But his channel is Some Gadget Guy, and that is uh, on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, as well as also on Facebook. And you can also catch him on the New Egg channel. Um, he hosts a show there with Trisha Hirschberger on Thursdays. I keep forgetting the time. I'm thinking it's like 1 p.m. Eastern. I it's uh, 10 a.m. Pacific, so I don't, I don't know when that is, but I think it's 1 p.m. Eastern. Yes! 1 p.m. Eastern, 10, 10 a.m. Pacific. I was correct. Um, so you can find him there, and it's, it's a great show. covers a lot of, um, you know, PC stuff, computing, uh, a lot of stuff that, of course, New York carries and some other just really cool tech in general. And then, of course, Mr. Um, Black Iron underscore man. That is Sam's handle. You can find him on Twitter. Uh, and myself, it is Board at Work for Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube, Facebook, as well as also our website. It's all Board at Work. So thank you very much. And always enjoy your entertainment. Bam.